Uh, yes, back behind Luke. Okay, so things that you need to understand is that this thing right here tells us a lot about the function. Okay, it has a leading coefficient and it has a degree. Go ahead. Okay, so the degree. The degree simply comes from the exponent. So what degree polynomial is this? Okay, so this is a fifth degree polynomial, which tells us what the function looks like. So if I have x to the fifth, what kind of, what kind of graph is it going to be? John Travolta, right? So we know it's a John Travolta. Okay, the leading coefficient is simply the number that's in front of the x to the fifth. So what's my leading coefficient on this? Negative 4. Okay, that also gives me information about what this looks like. The negative tells me what? Flips it upside down. The 4 tells me it's steep. Okay, so that's what you need to understand about that form. Now, that being said, we're going to play with uh, factored forms today. Okay, so in the past we did vertex, today we're going to play with factored. Ready? Number one. You guys don't seem very ready. Nobody else is excited. Except for Take a half hour break. Class would be over by then. Okay, let's start out easy because you guys are apparently tired. Okay, if I was going to graph x to the third power, what would it look like? John Travolta. It crosses the x-axis exactly where? 0, 0. Okay, so we're going to be looking for x-intercepts. By the way, do you remember how you find an x-intercept? Where it crosses the x-axis, but how do you do it algebraically? Find the zero. So how do you find the zeros? You set the function equal to zero. Okay, so... I have an x-intercept at 0. Perfect. Okay, we're also going to talk about turning points. Okay, so the definition of a turning point, I don't know if you want to write this down or not. I'm going to say it out loud. You can decide if you want to write it down. A turning point is when a function changes from increasing to decreasing. Or vice versa. So if it's decreasing, it changes to increasing. So what does it kind of look like my hand is doing? Like, what are we talking about of the graphs? Maximums and minimums. Okay, so turning points are like maximums and minimums. Do I have a turning point on this particular function? No. There is x, there is no min. Okay, that was fun. Let's do way more fun than that. Ready? Let's say we have x plus 3 and x minus 2. Okay, so this is factor. Factored form. Immediately, by looking at that, I can say, oh, I know exactly what that looks like. Okay, if I was going to put this in a standard form and foil it all out, remember I only care about that very first term, what would that very first term be? X what? What would you say? Okay, because if I have X times X times X, I have X cubed. Okay, so this looks like X cubed. Okay, so we're going to have this John Travolta thing going on. Okay, so a right arm up and a left arm down. But there's going to be a little bit more things going on. Okay, let's find our x-intercepts. Okay, we just said that to find the x-intercept, we take the function, we set it equal to 0, right? So I have 0 is equal to x times x plus 3 
times x minus 2. Okay, so how many zeros do I have? Three. Okay, I get one from x, I get x equaling zero, which is literally x equals zero. I get one from x plus three. If that's equal to zero, I get negative three. And if I have x minus two equaling zero, I have a third one at positive two. Sure. Okay, so if I plot this, 0, negative 3, and 2. Whoa. How does this function look? Huh? So just go straight? Okay, let's use uh, Desmos. The curve, yeah, it curves up and down. There's some curvature. Okay, so I had a... Uh... Oh, uh... I don't know. What did I say? X plus 3 and X minus 2. Is that what I said? There we go. Ah, do you see the John Travolta? Okay, so this is like a John Travolta who is totally dancing. He's getting jiggy with it. Okay. Crosses through a negative 3, crosses through 0, comes back up, back up through 2, and then increases up to positive infinity. Okay, so let's draw that. Starts down low, crosses comes back up. Nice, John Travolta. Sweet. How many turning points does this have? Two turning points. Okay, also what I want to talk about with uh, turning points. Okay, they're going to use the words local or global min or max. Hmm. Okay, so it can be a min or a max, and it can be a local min, a local max, a global min, or a global max. Anybody want to make an educated guess as to what this one right here would be? It is a local max. Okay, so a local max means a maximum point, but the function still exists higher than it. It's just like one of the maxes. Okay, it's not the absolute max. So this down here is a local min. We'll talk about that again in the next one. Okay, number three. Ooh, this is getting good. Okay, number three. Okay, so before I start, I'm going to think, what kind of function is this? What does it look like? So if I was going to FOIL it all out, what would my first term be? x cubed. So what does it look like? Okay, so I got this other John Travolta, another John Travolta to think about. Okay, so John Travolta, right arm up, left arm down, right? Okay, let's find the x-intercepts. Okay, so I take that, I set it equal to zero. How many x-intercepts do I have this time? Two, right? Okay, so if I take x minus four, can I do this without writing it? Set it equal to zero. What's my first one going to be? Plus four. And then what's my other one from x plus three going to be? Negative three. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so if I take those and I plot them on my little graph, one, two, three, four, and I got one in negative three. 
how is this one going to look? Right arm up, left arm down. It's got to hit those points. How'd you know that? Lucky guess. Makes sense. You're right, it does make sense, but I don't know if you know why it makes sense. Okay. Let's see if Cameron is right. Okay, so my equation was uh hey. Um x, what did I say, plus four? Or minus four? Minus four? Minus four squared, and then uh, x plus three, right? You see it? Let me pull way down. What does that look like to you? Okay. Oh, such a good. Where did it bounce? Good word. Bounced off the x axis at what x value? Close. Four. It bounced off the x value of four. I can tell you that. I could have told you that from the original function. So what about this tells me that the function bounces? Two quantities? What? I didn't say anything. Should we do another one? I'm not going to make a statement yet. Hey. By the way, what kind of max is that? Local, right? Local, local max. This down here? Did you say it was a max or a min? Ooh, interesting. So how many turning points did we have? TPs, two turning points. Okay, let's see if you can figure this thing out with the zeros. Let's go further. Let's. Okay, let's let's see. So, what's my leading term? Okay, so x to the fourth, right? What does this look like? Looks parabolic. Okay, so if it's a parabola, a positive parabola, we know the end behavior, right? The right arm is up and the left arm is up. Okay, let's find our x-intercepts. How many x-intercepts does this have? Three, right? What are they? Okay, perfect. Oops. One, negative two, four. Perfect. Okay, so one, negative two, four. Can you graph this without decimals or a calculator? Oh, okay. It looks like a W. That is true. Can you be more specific? What happens at those zeros? So I come down like this, right? Starting here. What happens at negative two? crosses. Then it comes back up. It's got to go to 1. And what happens at 1? Bounces. And then what happens at 4? 
goes back up. So it makes this like W E. Should we double check that? Better double check. So I had what was it? X minus one? X plus four. Oh gosh. Ooh, X. I knew there was a four in there. X minus four. Ooh. So my drawing was a little off. This one was like a perfect, like it was like totally symmetrical. Interesting. I'll redraw it. I was hoping that it did that because I wanted to make a point. I screwed that up. Okay, so tell me about what happens at zeros. When does it bounce? When does it cross? How did you know that? Becky? It bounce when it's squared. When the quantity is squared? Yes. yes. And not only squares, but even exponents. So if this happened to have been a 4, or a 6, or an 8, or a 2002, it would bounce no matter what. If the exponent is odd, it will cross through. Okay, so if I would have had a 3 here, it would have crossed through. Okay. Got it? No. Okay, bonus question. This one's yours. Woo! Almost missed. What are we at? Number 10 or something? Five. Graph that one. No calculator, no decimal, so you can do it without. Done? Okay. So, what are my two x intercepts? Three. three and two. What happens at three? What happens at two? What does my function look like? Okay. John Travolta, right arm up, left arm down, right? So, it's going to go start low going to cross, and when I get to 2, it's going to come down and bounce. Hmm? Oh yeah, my value is 3. You're right, I did do that opposite. Just because I don't know where 3 and 2 are on the x-axis. Let's try again. How about like this? This value is 2, so I'm going to bounce at 2 and cross at 3. There we go. 
Good catch. How many people got that right? Dang it. Darn numbers. Okay, now here, what, what if I would have done like this? What if I would have changed the coefficient in the very beginning to a negative 3? How would that have changed things? What does a negative 3 do to it? Makes it steeper. And what else? Flips it upside down, so the other arm goes up. Okay? So if it would have been a negative 3 in front, it would have started up here from the left, bounced, and crossed. And it would have been steeper. So let's see if I can draw that better with a steeper slope. I can do this. I got it. Oops. Too much raising. Oh, good lord. There we go. I'll just draw it. So. He doesn't like it if you hold long, so I better go fast. How about that? Okay. How do you feel? You got it? Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Do you guys remember notation for end behavior? Do you remember this notation? So, yeah, exactly. This, this right here. Okay, so like I've just been saying the right arm is up and the left arm is down. Well, that's not like mathematically correct notation. Okay, so if I asked you to write the end behavior, you have to write it in this format, like on a test. Do I need to go over that notation? A little bit, really fast? Okay, so if I was going to do x, just the function x, right? You know that it goes up like this, right? Okay, so what it says over there is that as x approaches positive infinity, meaning we go to the right, the y value does what? it approaches positive infinity. Okay. As x approaches negative infinity, what is my y value doing? <laughs> going to negative infinity. Keep going. One more. So like if it was x squared, we have a parabola. As x approaches positive infinity, what's my y doing? Going to positive. And as x approaches negative infinity, what's my y doing? Positive. Good there? Does that make sense? Okay. Perfect. I didn't think I had to, but I, I didn't want to not talk about it. Good?